if you want to find more resources on accountability, where can you do that? I'm Kathy Bertilli from TheIntimacyDojo.com, here with Victor Salmon from VictorSalmon.com. And Victor has an amazing page on all kinds of avail- uh, information for free, which I really appreciate your generosity putting it together. Where are some places that people want to learn more, and where did some of these ideas come from? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of these ideas originated in indigenous societies, um, as well as in the anarchist scene. Um, I would just like to acknowledge and take a moment um, to acknowledge the uh, genocide that happened in Canada with indigenous peoples and um, how challenging it is for me to, in my opinion, do justice to honoring those communities um, as a settler descended person. Um, this is Likewise, yes, and me too. <laughs> Yeah, my stream is coming from the unceded ancestral lands of the Coast Salish peoples, including Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and I'm forgetting one, Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish First Nations. Um, do you actually know any of the Indigenous communities? I do, what? and I don't have the, the... I looked them up because I love that people were saying that, and I don't have them on top of my head, and I'm sorry, I'll put them below. I think there's definitely... It, it comes back to that focused approach that there's there's room for all of us to become more aware of the genocides that happened and understanding um that coming to a place of acknowledgement doesn't mean coming to a place of guilt right Uh, i was speaking with um kim tall bear but i was also speaking with i loved her talk at converge Um, also, I think it was Tracy Bear last year who spoke. Mm-hmm. Do you remember? Yeah. At ConverseCon? Yes. Yeah, I was with Tracy Bear who um, gave me a really useful snippet on how white guilt just isn't useful. And, and that frailty um, that settler ascended people like myself have, um, even if I'm not white, um, you know, that sort of settler frailty or that settler guilt. Yes. Um, that doesn't necessarily promote... Um, healthy relationships, that it doesn't necessarily promote growth or improvement of situations. Mm -hmm. There are still Indigenous people in Canada without access to clean, fresh water. Um, And feeling, it's it's a Flint, Michigan situation, but it's our version of Flint, Michigan, basically. Um, Guilt doesn't motivate you to go and make progress. So talking about these communities that came up with these ideas, I think it's important to understand that in Indigenous communities that came up with these ideas, and again, this is just my perspective, as a settler descended person, um, but in these indigenous communities, um, the idea of social shame and social exclusion was very significant in a way that it wouldn't necessarily be in a metropolitan area where you have multiple communities you can leave and go to. Right. So I think understanding even in anarchist communities, if you opt out of the accountability process, you're opting out of that society, and that might be your whole society. You didn't really have another option. Right. Whereas when we're trying to import this, um, when we're trying to import these ideas into a sex-positive party space, into a swinger space, into a burner space, into a kink space... It's really challenging because we have to secure buy-in from yeah. all the stakeholders first. And that means having a rehabilitative process that hopefully at the end leads to someone being restored to society at least, mm-hmm. to participation, if not restored to leadership and teaching. And I think there is this really hard controversial question about just because you're restored to society does not mean you're restored to a position of power, or privilege, or mm-hmm. leadership. Yeah. At the same time, how do we secure buy-in for leaders who have made their whole life work on teaching, and how do we stop them from just going to a new society where they can teach Mm -hmm. um, without offering them some route to restoration in our own society? So it's like there are a lot of things that we're still working out as a community as we import this foreign process into our our local. Yeah, and I just pulled up the name, the the San Jose area is in... I might be saying it very badly. Mawikma Olone tribe was here. Um, they say that's the mostly what is here was in this area. Um, the people that lived here, um, and I think that the topic is challenging. My father abused me. I love my father very much, but he abused me. Um, and knowing that he really he didn't want to, like he was looking for. I, I, if there wasn't any available anything available for him, this was in the seventies, early seventies. Um, 
There was, if he went to a therapist or a police or a priest, he would have been put in jail. There was no restorative process that wouldn't end, have ended up in just you know, pulling the family apart and causing harm to, in many ways, to many people. Um, so I, I really stand for people being able to find healing and redemption in the community if they're not doing additional harm by being there. So I, I, I love that there are resources in, in, in communities and, and that have evolved the process that can allow people to restore, to make amends, to say, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. Help me learn, help me heal. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying at all that any of us have to opt into that. Like we, I, there are people I say, I'm sorry, you can not come back to my events. Like right. you were just caught, like we get to set boundaries. But yeah. I do think whenever we can, if we can help educate and improve and uplift the entire community, because we all learn through the process of, of the of learning. Like we're none of us are, mm -hmm. like oh I'm all I'm good. I don't have that problem at all. I think we all have issues around yeah. consent and how can we improve that? Mm -hmm. And we're growing as a society. Like what we learned a few years ago, like we didn't know before then. And what we're learning right. now will seem commonplace to us hopefully soon. But that we didn't know it right now. So mm -hmm. um, I love the resources you put together. I'll put the links below uh, this video because uh, Victor pulled up some really, really good um, information for everyone. So yes, and that accounting for ourselves link is by far, I think, so so far it's, it's the best. Um, it's the best sort of gestalt of all the information out there in nice. the community. I really appreciate you. You've put so much work into this, Victor, and so much thoughtful, caring uh, uh, energy. I, it's been such a pleasure talking to you about these things, and I would love to have you come back another time and we can get some more people will have questions, and I'm, I already have a zillion that I would love to talk to you more about. I love it. Let's write them down and we'll hammer them out later. Great. If you'd like to support Victor's work, he's, he's putting this all out there for free for people to, to learn from and implement if they want. Um, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Victor Salmon. And uh, if you have the resources to support his work, please do. Um, and we hope these videos have been helpful for you. Please leave comments and questions below. We'll answer them as best we can. And uh, I really I want to honor everyone who's tuned in and looked at this because this is a really difficult conversation and you're spending your time and energy developing and growing and learning new ideas. and. That makes the world a better place for all of us, and I stand for creating the world we want to live in. And Victor, thank you for, for being here and, and generously donating your time to this. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>